What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Town Hall Meeting with the Mayor. I am your host, Eugene Man Man Roberts. And today, we got what I call one of my brothers, like my brother. We know each other like over 15 years, 20 years. I ain't gonna keep telling y'all how long. But he's what you call a wizard. Like, I mean, Brainiac, he just knows everything. I mean, Danny's an amazing keyboard player, the father of Batman. That's enough. You're gonna learn this in this conversation. Give it up for my brother, Mr. Irvin Washington. People, people, people. I got my big bro here. This is my brother, my brother from another. We were separated and divided because of, you know, <laughs> things we won't talk about, brains and stuff. But you know what I'm saying? He came over to the, the bright side of life. Give it up for my brother, Urban Washington, everybody. What's hey, up, bro? Doing? What's going on? You know, a little this, a little that. What you been up to? What's going on? I see you got the toys behind you. What you been working on? Oh man, listen, a little bit of everything. Anything I can get my hands on, you know? Music is in the blood. Can't stop doing it. Corona or not, you know? Yeah. Man, so people, me and Irv grew up playing together with this gospel rapper named T.Y. Shout out to Ty. And um, man, all the things we do now, like far as touring and programming and keyboards and rigs, we were doing that as teenagers, like, <laughs> like gospel cafes True. and concerts. Our weekends was lit, Friday, Saturday, Sundays. Like, we were just going at it. And, you know, <laughs> that gave us this, like, you were probably, like, the first key, keyboard player I actually played with when it came to, like, that balance of creativity. And you know how we were. We was pedal boards, yeah. guitar pedals, and all types of stuff, <laughs> guitars, and vocal like I mean way before the touring which is crazy and um through that it, it gave us the relationship to when it's like hey Herb I can't do this you want to do this or he can't do it I do it and you know it wasn't never a, a worry of what anything lacked so shout out to Herb for that shout out to you, bro. thank you my but, brother um, so let's so speaking of that you know I used to work with J. Cole and Irv is now the MD for J. Cole, so we have, like, that similar thread. So talk about that, like, working with Cole just from – because if y'all hear any of that live album stuff, like, that's that man playing all that synth <laughs> bass and all – jeez. But anyway, talk about that, the, the gig with Cole and just the, the sonics of it and just your approach. Oh, man. You know, uh, let me first start by saying that this guy is – He's just as genuine as you see him. You know, he's just as genuine everywhere. And uh, it, it was a pleasure working with that guy, man. It, and you know what? The the main thing about playing for J. Cole is, like, he always wants to get the message out there, the message that he's pushing. So, you know, you do anything to kind of sonically help that, not to really cover that up. And it's it's a lot of – even though it seems simple, but, you know, it's it's a lot of things that kind of goes into – what we decide to do and how we decide to do it and how we want to play it, you know, right. those things in itself is, oh man, it's, it's wonderful. And, you know, it could be the difference between something being really annoying and something like really great, you know, feeling great, you know? Yeah. Kind of like arranging and approach, approaching the music more as a support than it is a distraction more than, you know, a lot of people get into arranging and they arrange for musicians. And I tell people, like, you cannot arrange for musicians. Like, yes, you can love everything you do, but you got to arrange for the fans, for the moment, for the crowd, for the for the artists, for the support of, like, the storyline. So, yeah, I agree with you there. Um, ah, move this thing out of my way. Um, yeah, so <laughs> talk about, like, just programming and just – Cause you like Irv is one of like the dopest programmers because he's a he's a nerd and a synth geek and like, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, actually, actually, I haven't even talked about keyboards, but let's talk about the system eight just because I want to talk about oh, that <laughs> lovely. Oh. Man, so that, 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 listen, that that thing is is a lot of what we use is always like it's new but it's all vintage inspired. Like the things that inspired us when we, you know, we were coming up, like, you know, for me, I, I didn't have a whole lot of, you know, expensive gear. Like we didn't, we just had what we had until right, we right, did right, right. But once we got our hands on it, like, you know, you just couldn't keep us away from it. So like a lot of that stuff, like 
is in the system eight because you know you you have the the Juno, the Jupiter, like all right, and, and it sounds so like it, it allows me to take what I don't want to take out the the vintage gear from the studio. It allows me to have that out on the road and to be able to program things like we'll be in rehearsal and you know we'll be listening to the songs and, and going and playing through the records and you know sometimes it it might not be something that's in the record but you want something that fits the the character yeah. of what he was trying to portray what he was trying to put out and you know going through it and hearing those sounds like it it puts you in in that moment you know just being yeah, able yeah, to yeah. find something that that touches right there like and sometimes it's accidental magic it's like scrolling through oh this is great but it's, yeah i think that's like the best edge. way to find sounds sometimes when it's like an accident like you really thought you were on a different sound and it's like <laughs> what is that actually <laughs> what is that <laughs> um so what's what's one of your most embarrassing moments on stage Ooh, <laughs> it might not have been your fault the- <laughs> I would say the one of the most embarrassing moments on stage, I was uh, playing talk box, believe it or not. And it was a section where the talk box was featured. And, um, you know, we got down cold, you know, got up, the spotlight was on me. And I went to go play the, you know, the little section that we had specifically, you know, dotted out for the, the talk box. And the camera's on me. And I went to go play and nothing came. I was like, oh. Oh no! <laughs> All you see is me and the camera, like, trying to, <laughs> trying to get the sound out. Oh man! I, and I think the second most embarrassing moment is well, hold, so, you know, well, hold on. What happened though? Oh man! <laughs> well, what happened is, is I actually had the the cable. It was a short in the cable. So when I went to go play it, like you heard it go up, and then that was it. Like nothing else came from the cable, from the keyboard to the talk box. So it made a brief sound for like a quarter of a second. And it's just like, what do you do when the camera is on you? You just, you got to come up with something, man. You know, the show don't stop. <laughs> so you it's play either, a lead, you know, just keep it moving. <laughs> you play a lead, you keep it moving. It's, it's either, you know, you so find something two? else to do uh, <laughs> or just look like a fool. There is no number two. <laughs> No, you yeah, said it was, yeah, a, fix said it. It was a second. You said it was a second, a second moment. Oh, oh, the second moment. Oh, the second moment is, uh, you know, you go, everybody, we all had solos. It was, matter of fact, we were in a three-man band. Myself, DJ Dummy, and Ron Gilmore. Shout out to Ron Gilmore. We, um, we, we were going around. We had these, this little thing going where we were kind of like battling, battling, you know. It's good fun, you know just tapping each other's solo. So got around to a solo, you know, I was playing my solo and everything was good. Like, you know, cause I think I was in the middle. I think Ron went first, I went second and Dummy went last. So, you know, I went to go play. Everything was great, woo, awesome. Then, uh, you know, I was supposed to stop and let DJ Dummy go. And the keyboard didn't stop. Sustain pedal broke. <laughs> So it was holding in the middle of his solo. It's like, doo. And you ain't know what it was. I didn't know what it was. Oh you man, got he some was bloopers. High. Yo, in a more recent, <laughs> on a more recent to me, we was playing, rocking out. Literally finished the whole hour set. The last four bars, my main two keyboards just dropped all the way down to the last pin but they didn't hit Ooh. the ground oh you they just it. dropped down to the last pin so i'm playing and it's just like like i'm like reaching down <laughs> to my ankles to try to like play the last chord of the song oh that's like, good oh that's so good <laughs> that was no bueno that was that was yeah that was all bad it, it was pretty embarrassing too that in uh. no i think I think that was it. I ain't really had. I don't really had too many bad ones, but I don't know. Uh, I had a keyboard falling on me, but that that wasn't too bad. No, any. I take that back. When a keyboard falls, what's that's your pretty bad. what's your uh dream collaborations like producer, singer, or songwriter? That's like on your Ooh. list, your bucket list. If My it ain't one, I give you list. three. I give you mm. three. I give you three. Yeah, I give you three. Mm. I would say. 
dang, you know what? I, I feel like that changed. I, I felt like at one point it would have been like a, a Stevie Wonder or a Prince. Yeah. But I I think that was the more musician side, the more producer side. I kind of would like to work with Pharrell. I yeah, think I can, that would be I can see that. That 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 would be great just because I'm 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 pretty unorthodox. Like, you know, I can't help it. You know, I, yeah, yeah, and yeah. that's kind of the part of the magic of you know finding these crazy sounds that fits right in the music. You know, but um, I, I think that just the the unorthodox the way he approaches his music is is just great. You know, I, I feel like that would be one. And and what's your most memorable performance? Ooh, most memorable performance. Man, you know what? I don't know. I we we have so many of them, you know. Yeah, I, I, that's always you know. I think I got a couple of my favorites, but you know, some Man, of them that's, are just... that's tough. I I remember performing in the garden for the you know selling out the garden with Cole for the first time. That was pretty cool. So that that yeah, was pretty a, memorable. A, um, yeah. I don't really know. I think play. other than it's weird, that, because like it's like when you when you play like Wells Fargo at the, in Philly, it's like that's a memory. When you play O2 Arena in London, that's a memory. It's just like I think uh, I, I think I got one. I think um, when we did uh, uh, Eminem and seeing because we did the Rapture tour with Eminem uh, and seeing like it was in it's it's not an arena. It's it was bigger than an arena. It was like. Oh my god! Oh, like a stadium, it, almost like a soccer yeah, stadium. Yeah, it was like a, it was like a. That's exactly what it was. It was a soccer stadium. I'm not sure how many it holds, but when you just look around, it was no, no, like, no. Yeah, they oh, hold about they, they hold about 150 to 100. They 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 pretty big. Oh, I want to say they like just as big as a, a football field, but not, probably bigger. Yeah, yeah, that that was amazing. It was just like seeing that many people. It's like doing a festival, but it's at a venue. It's like weird. Yeah. Yeah, the, the festival is a little different because you're you're always looking down on everybody. And yeah, it's yeah, many yeah. People at a festival, we do those all the time. But just being able, because you know they're they're on risers, they're up yeah. And you like, see the tears of people. Oh like my the goodness, the people. Yeah. yeah. I remember we was in Europe and um, I was with Wiz and y'all was over oh. there. Remember we was over there. I don't. don't yeah. Drake was Drake on that too. Drake, yeah. I want to say that was a that was a festival. Man, see people, this is what happens. All of our all of us are friends and we like have these stories because we're like traveling the world with different artists, but we end up on the same bills in the same cities. We get to hang out. And then we have stories like this. And <laughs> I remember quite frankly, Cole ran out during our set with Wiz and jumped on my keyboards. <laughs> he <laughs> sure did. <laughs> and not only that, he decided he wanted to hit a bad note. Like, oh yeah, I was like for the fun of it. <laughs> yeah, like okay. <laughs> uh, I don't think he was even thinking. I'm, I'm like, you don't even have no ears on. Like, I you just go. But you know what? He he does that. Like, I, I remember uh, he did that right after a solo. He just, <clears throat> you know, after a while, it just mm. he's just like, ah, I don't care. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. But you can just imagine what the fans think, like. <laughs> <laughs> or you listen back to a recording and you forget what actually happened and it's just like yeah. something happened on that note but I don't remember <laughs> like once I actually I found a recording it was like a video of a, a show and I was just like ah this is dope then come to find out all of our talk back mics were in the recording so <laughs> and it was it was it was a pretty Ooh. iconic show it was funny I mean, it didn't go to, it wasn't like they sold the DVD or nothing, but it was just funny that it actually happened to listen back yeah. to like, we was clowning. Oh man, listen, I actually heard a show like, oh no, we had a show where our talkbacks, because they're normally not in the artist's ears. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So just so you know, but you know, most of the time, you know, we clown around and you know, after the show it was like, you know, y'all were in my ear. I heard everything. Wow. <laughs> well, yeah, I hope that, I made you laugh. The, that, that's never the good thing. <laughs> well, at least you know what we get into during the show. Hey, man, listen, yo, I'll never forget. Yo, that happened you know to me we one like time. My, my talk back, I remember my talk back was in the house one time during like, it was like during the changeover though. And I said something and everybody was just like, 
Everybody looked up. <laughs> the whole crowd looked up, though. <laughs> I was just like, ooh. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You already know what type Bob it was. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. It was one of those, like, yo. If you, <laughs> yo, that's crazy. <laughs> it was like one of those. Because <laughs> I thought I was talking to she. I think I was talking to she to somebody. And yeah. everybody in the crowd looked up like. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness man so what's something you want to leave with the people man throughout this time like right now in life like my my thing has been to make sure people build relationships and like rekindle their relationships and you know not capitalize but like do cool things like you know what i'm saying like we got time on our hands now yeah yeah i i mean at the end of the day i feel like we're all here for each other at the end of the day and it's all about relationships you know, nobody, no man is an island. You don't make it on your own. You don't do anything. On your own. You know, it's good to have a band of brothers, but it's also that time. You don't, you don't know how much time you got left. So take the time and, and step out there, be creative, take some risks. Cause you, you know, if you, you safe all the time, you never know. Like there's been right. times that where, you know, I took some risks like, Hey, listen, I know this isn't, isn't in the record, but I really feel like this really goes. And I don't know if they're going to like it, you know, but it's just like, you know what, this is really what I'm feeling inside. Like, yeah, let me just go ahead and do it. And if, you know, if they don't like it, it's like, all right, I won't do it. But yeah. even in production, never know. Use that, use, even in production, use that different plugin that you keep skipping past. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You know, use that sound. You, you pass that sound all the time. Like, I wonder what this would sound like here. You, I mean, you got to go for it. You, you get one chance to do it. Man. And, and right. you know, it, Honestly, for me, it was that one time it started one time, like, let me just try this here. And then now all of a sudden, you know, I'm like, I'm this guy that everybody's like, oh, he's, he always got the crazy sound. And it's like, if yeah, I never yeah. took that risk to, you know, try and put this unorthodox thing here, like. The thing that made us weirdos. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. So the, the, the thing that, that makes you feel weird is the thing that actually makes you special. Man. It, it makes you special. There you it's go, people. Try stuff, things. Man. The things that make you weird makes you special. You heard it first from Irv Washington the Great. So before <laughs> we get out of here, Irv, my bro, thank you for all your contributions to music and always thank being you. a big bro to me. You know, we talk about life, houses, and kids, and, and keyboards and computers, but, you know, and we talk about life. Man. We, we about 20, 20 plus years in. It's crazy to say that. Wow. I know. But, right? you know, but before we get out of here, like I said, I want to thank you. Thank you. Thank you again. People, Urban Washington, y'all going to see some cool things. We always do stuff together. So we'll we'll do something cool for y'all. A little, little system eight video or something. Oh, something, yeah, something, something. Let's do it. Um, yeah. But Eugene Man Man Roberts, a.k.a. The Mayor, my bro, Urban Washington. Yes, sir. Yeah, man. See? Again, like you might see the comment thread, I'll be having my friends and my brothers on here and we talk for a long time. As you can see, he's literally a genius. So one more time for my brother, Urban Washington. Um, before we get out of here, I want to thank all my peoples at Roland, Brian, Kristen, Igor, Nelly, and of course, most of all, my bro, Joel. So Eugene Man Man Roberts, AKA the mayor, and I'm about to get out of here. Town hall meeting with the mayor. Oh yeah, shout out to Pleasure. This, this is lit. All right, we gotta go.